Hi, I'm Carl Franklin. In this episode of Blazor Train, I'm going to show off a few new features of Blazor in .NET 6. Dynamic components, required parameters, query parameters, HTML header content control, and multiple selections. And that's all coming up right now, right here on Blazor Train. All right, so I'm starting with this blog post here where Dan Roth announced ASP.NET Core in .NET 6, and specifically here on Blazor improvements. Let's look at these. Render components from JavaScript, we're going to leave to another show. Preserve pre-rendered state, we're going to leave to another show. Error boundaries, we've already covered. Custom event args, I'll do in another show, as well as inferring generic type parameters. Today we're going to talk about required component parameters, handling query string parameters, controlling HTML head content, and dynamically rendering components. I'm going to save JavaScript initializers for another show as well. So for this show, I'm going to create a standalone Blazor WebAssembly app called A Few New Things. Standalone meaning I am not going to select this guy right here, ASP.NET Core Hosted. So I'm starting here in the index page. And you know, we have this survey prompt component, right? It's a shared component, comes in the box, and it has a parameter, which is a nullable string called title. So I'm going to start without debugging, which you need to do if you're going to use hot reload. So I can change this title. You know, I can change stuff here with hot reload. Now you notice this isn't running in the debugger, so I don't get debugging. But as soon as I save it, you can see it changes over here. Hello, Carl. And I know I've done hot reload before with a preview, but I just want to bring it to your attention that, you know, some things work well, some things don't work so well. Like this, survey prompt. I took the title out, and it still shows. Save it. Reload. Right? It still shows. So it's still a work in progress. So what I can do is just rerun this in debug mode here. All right? So you see no title here. Right? There's just, please take our brief survey and tell us what you think. Okay. But there's something I can do in .NET 6, which is make a parameter required with the editor required attribute. And here's the thing. It's only an editor required. In other words, in design time, right? If I try to run this, it still runs. So it's not a runtime check. It's a design time check. And this is telling you, hey, Survey prompt expects a value for the parameter title, but a value may not have been provided. So again, this editor required parameter just gives you a warning at design time. It's not a runtime enforcement. Now, another new feature of .NET 6 in Blazor is dynamic components. So rather than explicitly saying, I want to create a survey prompt component, and here are the parameters, I can do it with a type and a dictionary of parameters by string. Let me give you a demo. I'm defining a record, dynamic type, and it has two properties, a type property and an I dictionary of string and object property. The type is called type, and the dictionary is called parameters. Now, if you've never seen records before, you don't know what records are, go to the .NET show episode 13. This guy right here, Classes, Records, and Structs, oh my. It's about 23 minutes long, and it covers the differences between classes and records and structs and tells you when you should be using each. But think of this record as a class, all right? It's just easier to create, and these properties are immutable. Now, I can make any property immutable by using init instead of set. So this means that dynamic types, which is a list of dynamic type, 
that I've created here, can be created, but I can't replace it. I can't say dynamic types equals and something else. I can initialize it, and I can certainly add items to it, but I can't replace it. So on initialized, I'm adding two survey prompt components to dynamic types. So we're creating a new dynamic type, and the type parameter is type of survey prompt, and the dictionary is a new dictionary of string object with one item in it. The key is title, and the object is hello Carl. It's a string object. And I created another one. The only difference is hello passenger. In the markup, I'm just going to say for each variable in dynamic types, create a dynamic component. Here's the type, and here are the parameters. There you go. Hello, Carl, and hello, passenger. So why do this? What's the benefit? Well, at design time, you might not know what types you need to instantiate or what their parameters are. You might want to keep those parameters in a dictionary because you might want to change them. All right, let's talk parameters. I'm going to create a new page called params. And very simply, I've got a page that takes a parameter, my name. My name is a nullable string. And my markup just says hello at my name. All right, this is something that's completely normal that you could do with .NET 5. And I've added a little parameters link over here. So here you can see the URL is params. Now I can do slash and then whatever my name is, I'll say Carl. And when it reloads, hello Carl. Okay, but what if I want to do this? Params question mark my name equals Carl. Well, that didn't do anything. So sometimes you may want parameters to be passed in the query string. So there's a new way that you can specify that you want this parameter to come out of the query string. Supply parameter from query. So params question mark my name equals Carl, and it picked it up. Interestingly, you can't have it both ways. I can't say params slash Carl and have it work. Because we've specified this supply parameter from query, it can't be both. Now, of course, what you can do is have two parameters, one regular parameter that comes from the route and another parameter that comes from the query. OK, the next thing I want to talk about is a great feature, a um, little overlooked in the fanfare of coming out with .NET 6, but it's pretty cool, multi-select list boxes. So I'm going to add a page called multi-select. I've got multi-select as my page, and I've also got this page title, which shows up in index as well, right? This is a way that you can change header information. See, if you look in index HTML, the default title is a few new things. And what I've done here is I've changed it to multi-select demo. Not only that, but I'm adding new head content, a meta tag. Meta, name equals description, content is this demo shows how select elements in .NET 6 can be multi-select. So before I even show you this code, let's take a look at that, because there's something a little bit strange there that you may or may not have picked up on. So first of all, as I'm running this, note the title up here, a few new things. And then after index loads, it changes to index, all right? I'm going to go over to multi-select, and it has changed to multi-select demo. Now, before I do the demo, look at this. I'm going to view the page source. I would expect to find multi-select demo here in the title. And also, the meta tag that I put in here, it's not there in the, in the source. Well, that's because it was changed dynamically. So if you look at the current state by bringing up the tools and looking at elements, expand the header, now you can see the title is actually multi-select demo and the meta tag is there. All right, so the idea is that we can select 
one or more items. If you hold down control and select, you can pick and choose. And if you hold down shift and select, you get all of the items. And this demo shows you how you can pre-select one or more cities. They're already selected, and I'll show you that code. All right, so there's two ways that we can do this. One is using a change event, which you're already used to, on change, selected cars changed. And we're using the multiple attribute, which you can do in regular HTML. The thing is, is that this event didn't handle multiple selected items before. So we're just showing the selected cars by joining selected cars, which is a string array, with commas. And if you look down in selected cars changed, now we just cast E value to a string array. And we've got our selected cars string array. Note this, selected cities, I've already got two of the cities selected, Baltimore and Seattle. This is right out of the documentation, but I did add some comments and I cleaned it up a little bit. So the second option, instead of using the onChange event, is to just bind directly to the string array, selected cities. And I think this is a much needed and much cleaner solution. But, you know, if you still need to handle the event, because you have to do something, you know, when that event changes, there you go. Now, can you use both of these at the same time? Nope, unfortunately not. Says, the attribute on change is used two or more times for this element. That's because when we bind in the background, we have to handle on change. And that's all I've got for today. Back to you in the studio, Carl. You know, that's the way Blazer Train should be, short and sweet. Hey, thanks for riding the rails with me today. This is where I jump off. I'll see you next time. Blazer Train!